президент. It's September 30th, 2022. Putin is holding a ceremony to mark the annexation of the occupied parts of the Luhansk, Donetsk, Kherson and Zaporizhia regions of Ukraine. The presidential palace is filled with all types of state officials and clergy. But let's focus on this one, Ramzan Kadyrov, the head of the small republic of Chechnya, and undoubtedly one of Putin's most recognizable allies. To many, he's known for his at times comical displays of hypermasculinity. His friendship with Khabib Nurmagomedov or his bizarre social media antics. But these are not the only reasons why Kadyrov seemingly never leaves international news headlines. He is also known for extreme violence, tyranny and absolute loyalty to Vladimir Putin. A loud supporter of the annexation of Crimea in 2014, he was quick to show his support of the full-scale war in Ukraine. Ukraine our president. Владимир Владимирович Путин больше всех украинцев. So, who is Ramzan Kadyrov? And what is his role in the current murderous invasion of Ukraine? Chechnya is a small republic in the south of Russia. Formerly a part of the Chechenia Wingosh ASSR, it endured period of domestic terror as well as numerous regime changes and two full-scale wars after the Soviet Union collapsed as part of an effort to secure independence from Russia. It is also a region of great significance to Vladimir Putin. After bombings in three Russian cities that killed over 300 people in 1999, attributed to Chechen terrorists and regarded by some as staged by Russian special forces, Putin declared war on the radicalized Chechen rebel groups, later known as the Second Chechen War. His approval rating skyrocketed, and with the help of the fear instilled in the Russian public, Putin won his first presidential election. It was a pivotal point in his career. Putin learned from Russia's first disorganized and poorly equipped attempt at taking over Chechnya. And by the spring of 2000, Russian forces were able to capture Grozny and significantly reduce military activity on Chechnya's territory. A key player in this eventual success was a former prominent Chechen pro-independence politician called Ahmad Kadyrov. Famous for proclaiming that every Chechen man had to kill at least 150 Russians during the First Chechen War, Ahmad was now working side by side with Putin to eliminate the unrest. His official reason for switching sides was his disdain for the radical Muslim Chechen rebels, proponents of Wahhabism, who were allegedly attempting to establish Sharia law in Chechnya and the Republic of Dagestan. Appointed by Putin as the head of the administration of the Chechen Republic, he slowly captured territories one by one, eliminating all military groups opposing his rule. Until in 2004, Ahmad was assassinated by the rebels. This is where we meet Ramzan, 27 years old and distraught by the death of his father, he finds sympathy and support in Vladimir Putin, who appoints Ramzan as the deputy prime minister of the Chechen Republic the very next day. And three years later, personally recommends his candidacy for the local presidential elections. Ramzan is elected by a landslide. And just like this, a mutually beneficial, long lasting bond is formed. Kadyrov Jr. was to keep Chechnya away from another rebellion and promote its identity as a part of Putin's strong and glorious Russia. How he was going to do that was not really important. So Kadyrov abolishes presidential election in the Republic and rewrites the Constitution to allow himself unlimited presidential terms through a questionable referendum and begins to build a personality cult around himself, his father, his family members, and most importantly, Vladimir Putin. I want him to be the president as long as he lives. As long as Putin backs me up, I can do everything. Allahu Akbar. And he wasn't... wrong. Under Putin's protection, Kadyrov appointed over 50 of his own relatives and children to governmental roles into large-scale national corporations and as heads of sports and cultural committees. My relatives in any institution and in any position have 10 times as much demanded from them because they have to prove that their work is not thanks to me, but in spite of me. I appoint those who I trust. 
awarding himself an extensive list of medals and titles, including Hero of the Chechen Republic, Renowned Scholar in the Sciences of the Chechen Republic, and even the Order of Merit for Dentistry of the First Degree. Built himself a nearly 700,000 square feet, five-story palace in the middle of Krosny with his own mosque and soccer field. The construction alone is estimated to have cost at least $130 million and costs Russian taxpayers over $1 million monthly in maintenance fees. He also built a similar palace next to his own for his second wife Fatima Hozuyeva and bought her multiple high-end apartments and three more luxury apartments for his first wife Minika Dirova, totaling around $4 million. Chechnya is one of the smallest, yet one of the most subsidized regions in the Russian Federation. Local authorities do not develop infrastructure, economy or industry within the Republic. All funds from the federal budget are spent on Kadyrov's personal uh, interests, such as expensive supercars, palaces, women, watches, athletes, horses, a personal PR company, and so on. Poverty and unemployment are rife in Chechnya. To this day, it is a region with some of the lowest pensions and salaries in the country. Никогда он верности клянется, никогда он заигрывает со своими людьми. This is Anna Polikovskaya, an award-winning journalist and one of Kadyrov's most prominent critics in Russia. On October 7, 2006, she was found dead in her apartment building in Moscow. The case was never fully solved. He actively pursues anyone who speaks out against him, whether it's human rights activists or children commenting about him online. In 2017, news of secret concentration camps for gay men in Chechnya broke out all over Russian and international media. Родителей молодых людей, которых насильно вернули в Чечню, уговаривают совершить убийство чести. Как сообщает российская ЛГБТ-сеть, родственников похищенных братьев Салеха Магомадова и Исмаила Исаева почти каждый день возят в полицию. Там с ними проводят беседы и требуют смыть позор кровью. When asked in an interview, he infamously replied, У нас таких людей нету. But members of the LGBTQ community and journalists were not the only targets. Well acquainted with murder, collective punishment and torture during his military career, Kadyrov Jr. didn't hesitate to legitimize these methods after coming into power. Everyone became a target. Questioning Kadyrov's leadership, witnessing police brutality or simply fleeing domestic violence all, even in the best scenario, would qualify you for a compulsory public apology to Ramzan. <laughs> Gruesome torture and mysterious disappearances awaited those less fortunate. The story of tortures, executions, abductions, filtration camps that existed during the wars in Chechnya remains to these days. People are still living in the fear. Independent human rights organizations cannot work inside Chechnya. There is less and less trust in them, not because they do not work well, but primarily because the law does not work in the Republic. This is especially evident in the example of the kidnapping my mother. Uh, just because of my uh, human rights activism and political activism, uh, of my family. She has been kidnapped and is being held hostage uh, despite having a number of illnesses that legally allow her to be released. Uh, however, the law is ignored in uh, Chechnya. Upon Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Kadyrov was one of its biggest supporters. Yeah, if it was Mr. Don. This is Ahmad's Special Forces Unit, named after his father. They're a part of what is informally called Kadyrovti, meaning soldiers from Chechnya. 
Kadyrovci have been found to be involved in war crimes committed in Bucha and Urpeng. The Kadyrovci came into the city. They walked around the neighborhoods from the morning on and fired at anyone in sight. At least three Chechen units allied to Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov were operating in the vicinity of Bucha during March. Kadyrov was just as eager to show his dedication to Putin's war when Russia announced the so-called partial mobilization. Once again, at the expense of his own people. The Chechen Republic, along with other non-Slavic regions of Russia, had some of the highest number of men drafted to fight in Ukraine. Locals felt betrayed and exploited, sent to die in what was essentially not their war. First, Ahmad Kadyrov called for fighting for the independence of uh, Chechnya in 1995. After already in 1999, his rhetoric changed on the contrary to pacifism. He agitated the Chechens to just give up, to lay down their arms, guns, and not resist the Russian army. This rhetoric was continued by his son Ramzan Kadyrov. But now Ramzan Kadyrov, on the contrary, first called for fighting uh, for the independence of uh, Donbas, and right now he wants to uh, to fight against Ukraine and for Russia, which recently fought against Chechnya. People in in uh, in the Republic were confused by such drastic uh, drastic change in the. Uh, in the rhetoric of local authorities. It seems ridiculous. Meanwhile, Kadyrov's official Telegram channel has been filled with graphic videos of Ukrainians allegedly captured by Ahmad soldiers, videos of Ramzan's relatives traveling to the occupied territories, and montages of displays of Chechen military power. On the other side, news of Chechen soldiers fighting for Ukraine has been receiving widespread media attention. A majority of them had fled to Europe after the Second Chechen War, but never gave up on an independent Chechnya, or as they call it, Ichkeria. This unit has been fighting in Ukraine since 2014. We освобождение Украины, так как если Украина освободится от России, это много чего знает, значит это. Мы это знаем. Мы цену этой свободе мы знаем. The significant differences between Kadyrov's militants who fights against Ukraine and Chechen um, units, military units who fights against Russia is that Kadyrov's people motivated by fear and uh, money. However, Chechen units motivated by idea of independence of Chechnya and, of course, religion. They see Kadyrov as a traitor who never cared for Chechnya or treated its people as human beings. For people, it's obvious what is happening, why and where everything is going. All it's clear. In Chechnya, people are waiting and wanting change, but they don't want to sacrifice again a bad peace for a new bloody war. People in Chechnya have already lived through two bloody wars and faced troubles. And all this time society is changing, but not in favor of Kadyrov. He is trying just to delay Chechen identity, but people uh, either reject Ramzan and his leadership or have to pretend to be safe and this is really hard choice.